we're heading to the woods and we are heading up to Stoltz Lumber Company and land. They own like tens of thousands of acres of land. They've got foresters on staff. And we talked to uh, one of the gentlemen named Matt. I asked him to come along. We're gonna ask him some questions and find out about what all happens in the woods. Is everybody just clear cutting trees or what is, what is actually going on? So stay tuned and find out. What's going on? Yeah, buddy. All right, so we're gonna buckle up. Okay. Uh, so what I want to know, what the what our podcast audience wants to know, is like debunk some some sawmill forestry myths for us, right? Like these conservation people are just saying like, stop cutting the trees, you're destroying the environment. Like, what's the right. reality? We're out here in the woods in Montana. Where are yeah. we at? What are we doing, man? So the big buzzword you hear everywhere is clear cut. That's the one you hear on the news, right. everyone throws around. Yeah. Is the word clear cut. Right. You know, and clear cutting has its place on the landscape in certain areas, whether it's, you know, heavy bug infestations, you know, after a wildfire where all of your trees are dead and you're gonna kind of start from scratch. But as you can see, you know, behind us here, Every acre behind us has been harvested at some point, some recently, some a little less recently, um, you know, and none of it's been clear cut. And so a lot of people, when you tell them, you know, we logged an area or we harvested an area, they just go to that word, go to the buzzword clear cut. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a, it's a message that the timber products industry is trying to change. And, you know, having some success, people are definitely coming around to it. Um, but what we try and do here in Montana and with Stoltz is what's called, we, we like to have a multi-age forest. So like in this stand behind us, you can see, you know, there's your five to 20 foot trees. Your, there's your 20 to 40 foot trees. And then your real big, you know, 60, 70 plus feet tall trees. Mm -hmm. And so that that is, you know, important for multiple reasons. You know, one big reason is forest health. So having a homogenous forest in this area sets you up for disaster. If something like mountain pine beetle were to come through and you know you have all the same trees that are all the same age, that mountain pine beetle is going to come through and wipe out you know almost all those trees. Where you have in these multi-age mixed species stands you have you know you have different species different ages so if something comes through it might kill some of the trees which isn't great but you're not hitting the reset button and going back to zero. And uh, so, you know, having that multi-age forest is really important to Stoltz. That's how we manage all of our company lands. That's how we, you know, promote forestry in the area. Um, that's what we tell, you know, private landowners to do. It's very, very rare that we clear cut. And in the seven years I've worked here, I've yet to actually do a clear cut. <laughs> so, what do you, so what do you do when you don't clear cut? What's the alternatives? So we do what's called thinning, and there's you know a ton of different words for thinning. There's thin from below, thin from above. There's selective harvest. There's some people call them you know there's overstore removals. There's shelter woods. Um, there's pre-commercial thinning. They're all different aspects. They're different tools that we have in the toolbox to manage the forest. You know if we were to set foot on a property that I've never been on before. And, be, and the landowner says, hey, I wanna log this and I wanna have the healthiest forest I can, what do we do? Well then, you know, I kinda of come in, we figure out, you know, what they have on the property, where their forest is at and which one of those tools is best. Maybe it's a, you know, something that's called a shelter wood, which is where we come in and thin it out to a variable, you know, 20 to 40 foot spacing, somewhere in that range, you know, leave your, your biggest and best trees that are gonna drop their seeds, their genetics and start that next next generation of trees up. So 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 what I'm hearing, Matt, is like <clears throat> there's a lot of thought that goes into this. It's not just like a, on a whim we show up with the logging crew and we just like get you know somebody says go west and we just like start <laughs> clear cutting, right? Like that's the that's yeah. the impression like so Silicon Valley or whatever folks that are, yeah. are tree huggers or how however it is that you know describe them. Yeah. They say, you know, logging's going to kill the, the earth or all yeah. this co2 and they try to like it's all this jargon that we get thrown 
you know, on our, on our industry. And so, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, we don't just walk out and, you know, get a call one day from the mill and say, Hey, we need more logs. And we're like, Oh crap. <laughs> this is awesome. And then we're like, there's some logs over there. <laughs> yeah. We don't do that. So, I mean, all of our Stolz land. So we own just under 40,000 acres scattered throughout the Flathead Valley here. Yeah. And it's all, every single acre of it is inventoried. We have a per acre volume of every single acre we own and so we're looking at a couple things when we decide whether to harvest a stand or not you know one is the volume there like is it economically feasible you know you're not going to come in and harvest something that you're going to lose money on that yeah just doesn't okay. make sense yeah it's a business yeah it's a business not a non-profit yeah exactly two you know, are there any forest health issues? Are there bugs or trees dying? Um, you know, is there a threat of fire in the right. area? Something like that. You know, then you're looking at how steep is it? Can I actually log it? You know, is it just a straight up rock cliff and, you know, <laughs> you're going to struggle? Yeah. Or is it something that's actually doable? So it's, you know, we plan out where we're going to harvest years in advance, at least three years is in advance. Is that right? Yeah. So I know this spring when the snow melts and we're back out in the woods, I know where I'm going because I've planned it from years back. Yeah, and yeah. I have it all broken out to, I mean, this spring I'm planting units I harvested in, in the past two years. Um, yeah, thinning units that, you know, pre-commercial thinning coming in and cutting, you know, smaller trees that don't make a commercial, commercial size log um, to open it up for the more dominant trees that kind of speed up the growth process of them. So wow. yeah, there's a lot that goes into it, not just driving out and then saying, we're gonna do this one. <laughs> there's a <laughs> no, lot more that awesome. goes into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> what else do you hear from the general public in terms of like things on the internet or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like what are these misconceptions that you want to debunk? Oh man. If you could just tell <laughs> the world, this is what we actually do, <clears throat> here's what it is. You know, I would like to say on the positive side of things, I do think that the public persona of the lumber industry, timber harvesting, loggers, you know, what we do out in the woods is changing for the better. I think, you know, our message is getting across. One, you know, it's good and bad. The fires in California are an eye-opening experience to a lot of people that you know, the whole city of Los Angeles, those people aren't really out here like, I wonder what they're doing in the forest all the time out here, you know? Um, so, and then they have those fires happen and you hear for three months on the news, you know, wildfires, trees dying, all this, you know, forestry related Negativity. terms, but you hear it in the news and so it gets people thinking about it. And so that's, that's really the biggest thing. I mean, I don't want to say that there's, <clears throat> I mean, obviously there's people out there that have misconceptions of our industry, but the biggest thing is to get people just generally thinking, you know, like thinking about the woods when they're hiking out there, they're like, huh, looking at the trees, looking at the shrubs, seeing what's going on. Like, why are all these trees dead on my hiking trail that I'm on? You know, why, why do I see these bugs crawling around everywhere when I'm out camping at this campground I like, you know, that's, that's the biggest thing is, you know, right now it kind of seems like there's a little bit of a disconnect <clears throat> between, you know, people in the forest and getting back out there into it is, you know, that's step one of starting to kind of understand the whole bigger picture of right. forestry and what goes on out here. Yeah, <clears throat> no, it'd be fun to come back when the snow does melt and see some logging operations and yeah. how you do that thinking process. How do you go approach, <clears throat> you know, and yeah. talk through that as well. Yeah, and our loggers we use here at Stoltz, they're all um, accredited logging professionals, so they're ALP certified. Um, they're all, they've been, 90% of our contractors have been doing this longer than I have, and they, you know, they really understand and have bought in to kind of our message or mission. And so when they're out there actually cutting the trees on the ground, you know, they're out there doing the right thing too. So we're, you know, I don't have to spend every second out there you know, either marking trees or holding their hand, you know, right. telling them what Now, what, what is, can you go back to that? What is, what is that <clears throat> mission? Or how do you summarize that mission? You know, so Stoltz has been around for our, this is our 111th year in 2023. Wow. And we plan, you know, we hope to be around for another 100 years. So our 
you know, our overall goal is sustainability. Right. You know, and sustainability and forest management. You know, we are a business, there are the economic sides, but our biggest thing is, you know, continuing to manage the land in a way that we feel is the, you know, correct way based off, you know, the best available science we know, you know, general knowledge of the area, what we experience while we're out on the ground, you know, all that good stuff. And so, mm. you know, sustainability is that, is our big ticket item. And, you know, we wouldn't have survived a hundred plus years if, you know, that wasn't our, our mindset from day one. So that's powerful, man. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you guys coming out here. This is beautiful. Yeah. So where, 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 are we, where, are we, where are we standing at right now? So we are standing, we're actually right on top of Trumbull Creek. This is what we call our North Mill Block. It's about a 20,000 acre block of land just east of Big Mountain Ski Resort. Um, where is uh, Glacier National Park from here? So we are just south west of Glacier. So Glacier's just to the north of us. Um, it's a beautiful park. People recognize that name, right? Oh yeah. And I you mean, guys there's are, just you guys a mountain right? in between us, a mountain and a river, and that's about it. So yeah, you know, a lot of people, that's another reason, you know, we like to, you know, do what we do and, you know, be open to the public, you know, don't try and hide what we're doing. We're proud of what we're doing out here. Right. And, uh, you so know, how do you do that? How do you do that with your land? You own how many <clears throat> acres of land in the area? So we own just under 40,000 acres of land and uh, we allow public access on all of our Stoltz land, you right. know, as long as it's a legal, a legal access point to it. You can't just jump on someone's property to get onto our property. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. so we allow, you know, hiking, mountain biking, four wheeling, dirt biking, hunting, um, kind of all general Recreation. Outdoor recreation, yeah. Beautiful. So, uh, yeah, we there's people out here. The city of Whitefish has trails that they've built on our property that people use. Um, you know, the city of Whitefish is just borders up this chunk of property, so we get a lot of, a lot of recreation on on this parcel of land. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah.